Glass ceilings are always hard to crack, and the one that stands above symphony conductors in the classical music world is no different from the rest. But women are slowly rising in the ranks of the nation's smaller ensembles. And tomorrow, at a performance by the San Francisco Civic Symphony, one such woman will take to the podium. PBS NewsHour weekend special correspondent Joanne Jennings has the story of one maestro's journey from a poor neighborhood in East Los Angeles to the rostrum in San Francisco. This story is part of our ongoing series about poverty and opportunity in America, Chasing the Dream. It's the first rehearsal of the season for San Francisco's Civic Symphony. The all-volunteer orchestra is composed of some 90 amateur musicians, ranging in age from 18 to 80. Some of them are retired, some of them are students, a lot of professionals, either in the tech industry, um, in the arts, business owners, lawyers, doctors, you name it. Heavy on the accents, please. Hmm? Ah. At the helm is 38-year-old Jessica Pejerano. She's not your typical classical music conductor. Being that I grew up in a poverty-stricken city of Los Angeles, um, predominantly Hispanic, classical music wasn't a thing. It was not a thing. So it wasn't part of the public school education. It wasn't part of my family tradition. It wasn't part of, you know, parties that we would go to. Uh, we wouldn't go to the symphony hall. Like, that wasn't a thing. The Mexican-American conductor was raised by a single mother in a tough section of East Los Angeles. She worked three different jobs and raised, you know, my brother and my little sister. And she did the best that she could, you know, to, to give us uh, the best life that she could. Um, I clearly remember, you know, when it was uh, trash nights, my mother and my aunt would literally uh, walk around uh, the city and collect cans and bottles to recycle them. They would collect, you know, broken um, appliances that they would fix and sell at a yard sale or a swamp meet. And I remember at that point feeling very ashamed and embarrassed that my mother was a, a trash digger. While her mother worked hard to keep food on the table, at 10 years old, Bejarano developed an interest in music. It kept me engaged in school. It kept me looking forward to the next day where I could pull out the trumpet out of the case and play in the band. You've said that music saved your life. I mean, was, is it that dramatic? I would say it was very dramatic because, you know, unfortunately kids get arrested, kids are murdered, kids are imprisoned, kids get pregnant, you know, and so I defied all those odds. I didn't become any of those statistics because music was always there to keep me, you know, on a straight path. Bejarano played trumpet in her high school's marching band, but she wasn't exposed to classical music until she enrolled in an orchestral class at Pasadena City College. So I'm sitting there playing the trumpet in the orchestra and just playing this repertoire and hearing the music around me. It was just like, oh my God, what is this? What is this? I was instantly drawn to, to the music, to the ensemble, to the setting, to the whole experience of it. Bejarano decided she wanted to be a conductor and a music educator. She was awarded a scholarship at the University of Wyoming and earned a master's degree at UC Davis. But despite her achievements, Bejarano wasn't always taken seriously. I remember at one point I was asked if I was serious about being a conductor, and I said, yeah, absolutely. And uh, the teacher proceeded to say, maybe you should go back to your country because it's not going to happen in mine. And I was told that the lesson was done and I was asked to leave the office and I, I remember leaving confused more than anything. I wasn't upset, I wasn't angry, I wasn't sad, I didn't cry, like I was just like in a daze of like, did that just happen? Did it make you more determined? Oh, of course. I allowed every experience to teach me something. You know, every time I was told no, you can't be a director or no, not going to happen here. Instead of, you know, feeling deflated, I would take that no or that negative energy and use it to catapult me even further into my career, even further into, you know, my dreams becoming a reality. It was more of an honor to, like, have the opportunity to actually perform here. In a field dominated by men, Bejarano dreams of eventually leading one of the nation's largest orchestras. In 2007, Marin Alsop was appointed music director of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, making her the first woman to hold such a position. And since then, she's still the only woman that is music director of a tier one orchestra. And I 
just don't understand why it's been so difficult for women and I'm hoping that it will change as time unfolds. When she's not conducting, Bejarano can be found teaching music at University High School in San Francisco. Short, now long. Woven into her lessons are stories about the composers whose music her students are playing. Take, for example, Tchaikovsky. The story of this man and what he went through in Russia and him being, you know, a gay man and his only vehicle of expression, his only way of loving was through his music. And when you listen to his music, you feel it, you hear it. For Bejarano, some compositions are deeply personal, like Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5. I would listen to the second movement of the Beethoven Piano Concerto every morning, and it was like a source of inspiration for me. It, it, would, it would motivate me. It was like my musical Wheaties, you know? And it helped me transition. It, it, for me, that piece also saved How my so? life. It gave me peace. It gave me inner beauty, um, and it would give me momentum for the day. And so, when Bejarano's mother fell ill in 2012, it felt natural to play it for her. I remember I played the, that movement for her before she passed away, thinking that because it saved my life, it would save her life. And I played it for her, and it didn't save her life. And so um, I was mad at music for after that for a while. Now as an adult, you know, looking back at what my mom did, the sacrifices that she made to give us life, to give us a fighting chance, what a woman, what a woman. It took a year for Bejarano to return to her music. I got back into the swing of, of my life with even more momentum and, and even more thirst. This past October, for the first time since her mother's death, Bejarano brought Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5 to the stage. The fact of us putting it together and on stage is, is a pretty big deal for me. Like I am back in music and um, I'm good, I'm ready.